this Super Nintendo game, Earthbound, is worth $350 to $400. I only paid $250 for it because somebody tried to fix it, but unfortunately failed. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. So the case on this game, the sh outer shell, really isn't in too bad a condition. The labels look pretty decent. This one definitely is faded and scratched, but really not too bad. But we gotta see what's going on on the inside. Okay, here we go. Just two screws to get these apart. Oh wow, okay, so we've got, it looks like some corrosion on the traces. Yeah, there's some green solder mask that's kind of worn away here. Not too much damage on this side. Let's check the top side or the other side. And definitely have some liquid damage here. Missing a battery and these things have just kind of been torn up. It looks like that battery must have leaked or something over here. Uh, these pins also corroded. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. This one, the copper is totally been, it looks like torn off. And this one, I don't know. This one might be pretty bad too. These are pretty difficult to replace in a way that will stay, that will kind of like um, stay fixed. Because if you replace them, it's easy for it to just peel off. Like if you were to super glue a new trace on. But I think I have something that might work for that. You got some more corrosion up here. Okay, I think what we're gonna have to do is get under the microscope and inspect this a little bit closer. All right, and here are those nasty battery contacts. It's like somebody just tore the battery off of there. That's one way to get it off, I guess. All right, let's look around here, see what we have. Those pins all look pretty good. We've got some corrosion down here for sure. That pin is a little corroded, but not too bad. This capacitor right over here has some corrosion, but it looks like everything's still connected and doing fine there. This one looks fine. This pin's got a little corrosion on it. These look actually probably okay. We've got yeah, a little bit of liquid damage under there, but Nothing crazy, nothing that's gonna cause a problem, at least right there. And no problems down here. We definitely have a problem here. But I don't see a break in the circuit trace. Everything looks still connected there. Oh, maybe not. The corrosion is eating through that trace which that's connected to this, uh, that trace right there, the, the game slot uh, pin. That's in pretty bad shape. What else do we have here? All these look okay until we get to here. This one's a problem. And there's a, a break here, there's no copper here, and there's no copper all the way here, so this is a problem all the way up to up here where you can see the copper on this tray. So that one is definitely a problem as well. And then looking at all these connections, these look mostly fine. Let's check the other side real quick. Yeah, nothing too crazy here. All those solder joints look fine. Let's check the game slot pins. So on the back side, these actually all look mostly okay. That one's definitely got some problems. And there's a little bit of copper hanging on right here. So that trace actually I think is okay. Oh, or is it? Oh, uh, maybe not. Nope. So right here is a break in that circuit as well. One, two, yeah, that is this same pin. So given that there's so many of these game slot connectors that are bad and there's not really a super good way to fix these, I do know a way that you can fix them and I'm gonna demonstrate that. This is gonna be my first one of these I've ever done. So it'll kind of be an experiment for me too, but I think this method would work. But also I'm not confident in my skills or necessarily the method because I haven't tried it before. So I'm gonna try that on this one trace just to see if it works, but then after that, we're gonna swap this ROM into a better board 
and that's what we're gonna do to fix this one. Hey, Future Steve with a little more hair here to tell you about iFixit's new game console toolkit. This is their Xbox toolkit. It comes in a nice canvas pouch, nice and strong, with a nice quality zipper top, and this is what it has inside. First, we have a nice brush so you can brush it out, keep things nice and clean inside, an anti-static wrist strap, a set of good quality tweezers, 10 tiny cleaning swabs, of course, a spudger, I use these all the time, a set of opening picks, security T8, security T10, and security T6 bits, a metal spudger, these are super good for prying off any, any pieces that are really hard to get to. It's got a nice thin edge right here and a nice pointed edge over here. And of course, a driver for those bits and then an iFixit patch. I'm a huge fan of iFixit toolkits already, but if you don't necessarily wanna spend the money on the larger toolkits and you wanna buy a toolkit that has just the tools that you need to fix your specific device, these game console toolkits are the ticket. They're a great price, high quality, and from a company that actually cares about repair. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right to it. Now, this is the first time I've ever done this. I think this is the only chip we have to swap, so we'll try that first and see if it works. But before we do that, let's get this circuit pad replaced and see how that works. Before we do that, we need to scrape this old one off. How is this one stuck on here so good? Definitely a lot for this little grinding pen, but it's coming. I really don't want to grind into the board there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Now we'll clean this up a little bit. I'm actually going to use my um, grinding pen to kind of rough up this whole pad. Now we'll clean this with a cotton swab. Just rub on it really good until it's nice and clean. All right, and there we go. So next, I'm gonna use this replacement pad. And I already have it marked where I need to cut. So I'm gonna cut it there, hopefully somewhat straight. So these traces have a film on them. And the film is actually a glue, an adhesive that bonds when it's hot. So the goal here is to Remove this and then we'll place it and then we'll heat it up and this adhesive should melt and bond it to the board. That's what's supposed to happen. Now I have that placed approximately correctly. It's gonna be hard to heat this up while I keep this in line where I think it needs to be, but here we go. Now I actually don't have the correct iron for this. There is a uh, bonding iron you're supposed to use. I'm not using that bonding iron. <laughs> okay. That's pretty rough, but that's approximately what we need to do. Now let's clean this up a bit. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Now, would that work going in and out of a game slot long term? I don't know. That's hard to say, and that's why I don't want to repair that this cart with that uh, method, especially because there's three of them. I think this probably could work. Um, I'm not sure about long term, but it definitely would work for a while, I think, just based on this uh, experiment. The other thing too is if you have the correct bonding iron, I think this would also look a lot better and probably work a lot better. But I just wanted to try it with my soldering iron just to see if this was even an option for fixing these in the future. And based on what I see here, I think it actually might be. Now that we're done with this experiment, let's get to the actual repair. So I have a copy of NHL 97. This is a pretty cheap game that you can buy. And the board on this should be very close or basically exact to the board on Earthbound. So let's check it out and see if it is. That's what we have on the inside of NHL 97. And this is Earthbound. What do we think? It looks exactly the same. It's got the same number here. All the other markings are the same. So as far as I'm aware, the only chip we need to swap is this chip onto this chip. So I'm gonna remove this one and then we'll put this one in, in its place. 
then we got to give the pins a good cleaning and also replace this battery. But let's get that chip swapped and hopefully that's all we'll have to do to fix this one. So I'm actually going to remove this chip using hot air and use my hot air soldering station to heat from the bottom and then remove the chip using a pair of tweezers. And now we need to use the same method to remove the chip from this board. Should be getting melting. Yep, there we go. I was about to say it should be melting any time now. It totally was. Get out of there. There we go. Got it. Now looking at this earthbound cartridge, it was not in good condition under here. Although I don't see any like permanent damage. But it was pretty dirty under here. The chip itself is really dirty. I don't like the looks of these marks. That reminds me of like overheating marks, but hopefully the chip is okay. If it's not, then <laughs> that's obviously not ideal. But we're gonna go under the assumption that the chip is just fine. So we've got that all clean. Now what I'm gonna do is clean up this board. We need to remove a bunch of the solder so we can get the get these holes opened up so we can install the new chip. We also need to clean up these legs. This old solder right here is kind of stuck to it. That'll prevent the chip from going down in the holes. So first let's clean up these holes and then we'll get the chip installed. So we need to flux it up. Flux is going to help all this solder flow out of these out of these holes. Using a large iron, so we got a lot of heat on these to pull that solder out. And I'll come through on the bottom row. Our wick is getting saturated. That's why it's not continuing to pull the solder off. So let's. Cut off the saturated wick, starting right about here, it looks like. There we go. Now let's clean up the chip. I'm gonna bring some solder over. And get these pins full of solder. So then when I bring my iron over, they just clean right up. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Okay, now this gets mounted just like this. Gotta make sure all those go right in the holes. Oh, and they do. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now we just need to come through and solder each of those legs on, and then we can clean it all up and get that battery replaced. Of course, we need to add some flux. Not adding quite as much since there is some flux on the board. And here we go. Now let's clean this up more and then we'll get under a microscope and just make sure all those joints are perfect. All right. And looking at each of these joints, they all look really good. Solder looks great. No problems there. Okay, so while that looks good, let's get this battery replaced. Now for this, I'm gonna use the solder wick method again. So we gotta get lots of flux on these joints. There's a lot of solder here. There we go. Um, bending the braid up like this just makes it so I can get into tighter spaces a little bit easier. Okay, and that is coming up nicely. Got to get some on this side now.
Now let's get this one. Trim off the soaked section of braid. Give ourselves a little bend right there. There we go. Now we can get down and get solder up. Okay. Well, now let's see if that oh, battery just falls right out. Perfect. Now, before we get this battery out, what I'm going to do here, and I don't know if this will make this game worth more or less, but I'm actually going to install a battery holder so you can actually replace the battery. You got to make sure it is in there correctly, though. So we're going to install this brand new battery which is going to go in the holder, should go in, yep, just like that. So this connection connects with the top, which is positive, and that is the top connection right there. That means that the battery holder needs to go in like this. So one goes down there. Oh, come on. There we go. And one goes right there. That's a little bit tall, but we're going to see if that is going to work for us. I think it'll work fine. Hopefully this doesn't devalue the cartridge. I wouldn't think it would. It just is obviously it makes the battery much easier to replace, but you never know with stuff like this. Sometimes these games that are more valuable, people are a little picky with. So I don't know. I suppose if nothing else, I could just, you know, uninstall it if it was that big of a deal. Okay, and that actually looks pretty good. Okay, let's get this cleaned up. Then we'll get the battery in, and then we'll clean the pins. No point in doing all this work if we have a dirty game. Now to clean the pins, I'm gonna be using some deoxit, and then I'm gonna use a magic eraser. And I am fully aware that the magic eraser is abrasive, and some people are gonna be upset that I'm using it for this. But honestly, I've used it on a lot of games, and it works really, really good. Okay, so now that that's done, I'll come through, clean off the excess deoxid and any gunk that it removed. Just like that. And then I just put a very light coating of deoxid on these pins. Just like that. Okay, now the top side, and we're gonna do the same thing. Deoxit, magic eraser. Okay, clean the pens, dry the pens, and then deoxit. Just a little bit. Don't want it to get all over everything, just enough to kind of preserve the pens keep them in good shape. All right, there we go. Now we can get this installed into the cartridge. That's sure a nice looking cartridge now. There we go. Now we just got to put the screws in, then we can test it out and see if all that work was worth it. Before we test it, I do want to mention that if you want a few more details on how to clean multiple different types of game cartridges, we actually have a blog post right on our website that goes into a little more detail than I do here in the video. You can find that right on our website, and I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right to the post. Now, let's get this plugged in to our Super Nintendo Entertainment System and see if it's going to work. All right, and power on. Okay, black screen, Nintendo logo, that's good. Good. And that is pretty scrambled. Uh, wait, that's just part of the game. I'm not gonna lie, I've never played this game before. I've never even seen it. So that's just part of the startup screen. 
And here we go. So the game is fully working. So that was quite a bit of work, but I love to see this Earthbound game working again, and I'll be able to make some good money off of it. If you want to see a video where I tried to fix a whole bunch of Pokemon games, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me and see if I was able to fix those. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.